In this video, we're going to import a KML file into After Effects to combine with a Google Earth Studio project. This tutorial will show you how to create a KML route, set up Google Earth Studio to properly track a route, create a mask within Google Earth Studio to allow for proper three-dimensional overlay, and combine the route with Earth Studio renders in After Effects. To get started, we're going to download the script from GitHub. Use the link in the description below. We'll be downloading the KMLGES import.jsx file. Select the code button and then download zip. Save the zip file to your computer. Then navigate to the zip file and extract it. and then navigate into the folder finding the KMLGES import.jsx file. Make a copy of this file. Then navigate to your project file on your system and paste it. We'll be using this script file later on in the project. While various other programs can generate a KML file, We'll be using the Google Earth Pro desktop application to create our route as it provides some enhanced flexibility we will use in integrating with Earth Studio. Starting in Google Earth Pro, we'll create a direction route from Buckingham Palace in London to St. Paul's Cathedral. You can also manually create a route using the Path tool. Once you've selected the route, you can copy them to your My Places folder by using the Copy to My Place button. This will copy the routes to your My Places folder. Now expand Places. You can see the different paths that are provided. Select the path that you like. Click on the Expand button and scroll down to the route. Right mouse click and then select Properties. We can change the color of the route as well as the width. This will be for reference only in Google Earth Studio. Now we'll export the KML file. So we'll go back to the route, right mouse click, and then save place as. We'll select the KML format as that is compatible with the After Effects importer. And we'll save the KML file to your hard drive. Now jumping over to Chrome and Google Earth Studio, we're going to create a new project. We're going to then import the KML file that we created. And we'll double click on it. This will take us to the portion of the globe where the KML file is located. And as you can see, the path is visible in Google Earth Studio. We're then going to start by creating a couple track points so that we have some positioning information to use in After Effects. The first is at the very start point of the route. The second will be at the end of the route. And you can see that there's an altitude difference there of approximately 10 meters. After Effects is not a full 3D program. When we import the KML file into After Effects, it will be on a 3D plane with all points having the same altitude. We can, however, simulate altitude changes by knowing the beginning and end differences in altitude. If your path has a variety of different altitudes or a significant elevation change, you'll want to use our 3D KML importer for Blender. A video will be coming out shortly on how to achieve this. Back to the track points, we're going to add one at the midpoint as well, and this is just going to be a visual reference to time our animation. So we're going to start our animation here. The objective, obviously, is to include the route in the animation itself. I usually begin by starting at the uh, first frame, and then creating a final frame that I'd like to see, and then following the path along the timeline, creating a variety of different keyframes, to represent the path we want to display. Once we've blocked out the basic keyframes that we want to use, we can go back and fine tune the look of the animation. 
to create some softer lighting conditions, I'm going to use the time of day function and set it for relatively early in the morning. It gives a nice golden glow on some of the buildings. Now that the animation is complete, uh, we're going to click on the render button. And uh, actually we forgot one item. We can see the, uh, the path there in red. So we're going to go back and actually turn off our path. This will be our full render. So this will be the high resolution render that we will then overlay the KML route in After Effects. And we're going to use the cloud rendering option to generate a 4K version of this animation. So while that's rendering in the cloud, we're going to jump back over to Google Earth Pro to create our mask layer. The mask layer will allow us to isolate the road surface from the 3D buildings, allowing the path to interact with the 3D environment. One of the easiest ways to create the mask is to cover the entire area of the route. Using the polygon tool, we're going to outline the route area. Then in the properties dialog, we're going to change our fill color to red. You could use either red, green, or blue. In this instance, I'm going to avoid green because there's quite a few trees in the scene. And I'm also going to avoid blue as there's a blue hue in many of the buildings. The red will provide a good contrast in creating our mask. We'll then also select filled in our area section. And then jumping over to the altitude tab, we'll want to confirm that the altitude is clamped to the ground. Then as before, we'll right mouse click on the untitled polygon and select save place as. And as before, we'll save as a KML file. And then jumping back over to Google Earth Studio in Chrome, we're going to load the KML file. And you'll see it puts down a nice red carpet uh, in our scene. And again, this uh, red surface that we see here will not be visible in our final render, but it does allow us to isolate the ground surface from the 3D model. So we're now going to click on Render and render our mask images. Currently, the video renderer does not include KML information, so we'll be rendering this locally on our computer. We'll also uh, select our dimensions as an HD dimensions, ensuring that our tracking data is the JSX tracking information, with our global coordinate space global and texture quality as high. And we'll click on render, and that will save the files locally to our system. So when the rendering's done, we'll also uh, grab our cloud render as well, which is also completed, and save that uh, to our system. And now we're going to jump into After Effects to composite. In After Effects, we're going to go to File, Script, and then Run Script File. We're going to run the script file provided by Google Earth Studio, along with the footage. This will load the image sequence footage, along with the camera and tracking data. We'll then go ahead and delete our text layers. In the effects panel, we'll type in key and drag over the linear color key to our image sequence. Then using the eyedropper tool, we'll select the red from the image. This will make all red items transparent. We'll then jump over to the project panel again. We'll right mouse click in the file list and select import file. We'll then select the rendered video file. We'll then drag the rendered video file into the workspace. Since the video file is in 4K resolution and our composition is in HD, we'll need to make adjustments to its scale at 50%. We're now going to import the KML file using a script. A link to the script is provided in the description below. You can use the same script for all Earth Studio projects. Start by selecting an object in the workspace area. Then go to File, Scripts, Run Script File. Locate the script file on your system and double click to run. A dialog window will open up asking you to select the KML file. A new shape layer will appear in your workspace. This shape layer contains the KML path. The starting point of this route is only 5 meters above sea level. The import tool will bring in all routes at sea level. If you're importing a route 
that is considerably higher than sea level, you may not see the route until we've associated it to our start point. To associate it to the start point, select the parent as the first track point you created in Google Earth Studio. We'll then set the position under transform to 0, 0, 0. This will now link the KML path to the start point. From our observations in Google Earth Studio, we know there's an approximately 10 meter difference between the start point and the end point. We're going to simulate this difference in height by setting a keyframe at the end point. A value of negative 10 will be 10 meters above our starting point. Then we'll go back to frame 1 and reset it back to 0. Now we're going to set up the basic styling and keyframes for the path. In the content section, we'll expand stroke 1. We'll then set the stroke width to 4 pixels, the line cap to round cap, and the join to rounded join. To control the reveal of the route, we're going to use Trim Paths. We'll go to Add and then select Trim Paths. Not all routes start exactly where you'd like, so we're going to set a start point within the actual route. We'll just play around with the start and end values until we get a look that we like to start with. We'll then set the stopwatch for the end value so we can keyframe the adjustments. Then at an interval of about 5 seconds, we're going to adjust our endpoint values so that we can reveal the route along the animation. We'll do this for the entire animation. We'll then check the gaps between the 5 second intervals to see if any adjustment is required. Now that the basic styling and reveal is complete, We'll add the masking to the animation to hide the route behind buildings. First thing we're going to do is create a duplicate of the primary video, which is the MP4. We'll then drag that underneath the image sequence, which includes the red mask. To ensure we don't have any problems using the mask, we're going to pre-compose the image sequence. We'll copy all of the elements to the composition. We're going to drag the route underneath the first video and apply the mask. So first we'll select the shape layer and drag it under london.mp4. Then in the effects panel we'll search for set matte and we'll drag that to the first london.mp4. We'll then set our source to the image sequence with the mask. You can now see how the route appears underneath the archway. So we'll check the animation for any issues, and we see one here where our mask's softness is a little bit too strong. We'll set that back to 5%, and you can see how it appears properly behind objects. And since this is London, we'll add a little bit of style to our path as well. So to do this, we're going to change our first uh, stroke item to red. We're going to use the Add button again to add two more strokes. We'll put our first stroke on top of the others, and then select our second stroke. We'll change the color to white with a width of 6 and maintaining our line cap and line join. And then with our third stroke, we'll change it to blue with a uh, width of 8, and again, round uh, cap and join. And that now looks uh, fairly British. You can also add shadows to add a little bit of dimension to the route as well. So we'll turn off the uh, visibility for our mask layer and we'll just double check the animation and it looks like it's uh, pretty much ready to render. So as you watch this little tour of London, I'll remind you that uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. And remember to subscribe and like this video. We'll be coming out with our 3D KML video uh, in the coming weeks for use with Blender. A click of the notification bell will make sure that uh, you're first in line to watch that one. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon.